So I told you a while back in one of my other videos that one of the newest things that I am totally going crazy about is stick pins. Um, and I shared with you some of the ones that I had already, um, especially the ones I found in my grandmother's sewing box. Um, and I made these out of um, old large sewing needles. And then last night, I made this one, and this one. I like this one a lot. And this one, okay. So this is going to be the first of what's going to be probably two videos. Um, I'm going to show you how I've been making the stick pins. And then in another video, I'll show you how to make a little sort of a fabric or paper folder to store the stick pins in or to put them in if you're going to share them. Um, and I'm right now just keeping mine in this little, it's like a salsa, salsa, a guacamole bowl. It's from the dollar store. Okay, so yesterday, or well, a few days ago, um, and you'll notice I don't have my on. Yeah, so it's been four weeks since surgery which means I can use, lose the waist strap and pillow that came off yesterday and uh, last night and I have to wear the sling only but only when I'm not at home. Um, when I'm at home I don't have to wear any of it as long as I don't do anything with this arm above waist level. So, alright, so um, that being said you can all stop worrying. I have doctors, that's doctor's orders so just so you know. All right, so I, a couple days ago, got in a shipment of stuff from Joann's that I ordered, and um, I'll share with you guys what I got. So I got these Maya Road um, Butterfly Pins, and these are short pins. These are, I don't even know, but they look like they're like an inch and a half. Now, you could make these into a small stick pin. Um, they're really cute. I like them just the way they are, so I'll probably... Uh, keep them, use them, and or share them just the way they are. Probably won't do anything to them. Um, I also got these pins. These are from my mind's eye. There's three different sizes in here. And again, these are already decorated, so I probably wouldn't do anything to them. So if you don't want to make stick pins, the, this is an option for you. I got like two packs of each design. And then here's another one. And then, what else did I get that's in here? I got some three inch stick pins. Now, you don't have to order any of these online like I did. You could go to Joann's and um, for the basic stick pin, if you want to make stick pins out of using beads and things, then you want a floral stick pin um, and or corsage pin. You want something that's, I personally like a pin that's at least like two and a half to three inches long. So these are a big three inch pin these pearl ones that I've been using. It's a big three inch floral, it's a floral pin. So you're going to find it in the uh, floral department where they have all the floral, floral crafts, the floral foam, the silk flowers and all that stuff. So I have the pearl headed one and then they have these ones that have the crystal tops. Okay. So we're going to put all these back in my bucket, which by the way, I found this little bucket at Goodwill this morning and it was $1.69. I actually found that one. And this one, same price. So I needed something to put all my stick pin stuff in. So then the other thing you're going to need is some glue. So the two glues that I found that work for the stick pin that's made out of the needle, this one, it didn't have a top. It's a, it's a sewing needle, so it's got an eye in the top. So what I did was I filled the hole inside the center of the bead with some epoxy type glue. I happened to use... Um, Bond 527. It's what I had handy. I do have E6000 up there. I just couldn't reach it one-handed um, and this was handy. Um, either one would work fine. And then I let that dry and then I topped off the holes with some glossy accents. Um, you don't have to use both glues. You could just use glossy accents or just use the epoxy. I chose to use both. Um, 
the pins with the pearl or crystal top or beaded top are done the same way, sort of. So we're going to make some here. I have some lamp work beads that I got from Oriental Trading Company. They were really inexpensive. Um, that's where the little mushrooms are from. Aren't they cute? So I'm going to take some of those out. Oh, my desk is a mess again. Okay, so I can't move this part of my arm up like this. It's not happening, but I can use the lower part of my arm. Yay! Okay, so I have my pearl-headed pin, and I'm going to start with this mushroom because it's loose. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my glossy accents. I'm going to put a little bead of glossy accents at what is the base of the pearl, where the pearl meets the pin. Okay, and I'm going to slide my mushroom down and push it down so it's seated well on that um, pearl. Then I'm going to shove some more glossy accents into the hole at the base of the mushroom. Okay, then I have these other small little crystal beads, and I'm going to put one of those over the pin. And I'm going to move the beads around until that small pin, it will nestle itself inside the hole of the bottom in the bottom of the mushroom, and I can feel it do that. So now the only thing I have to do is, and this is this is the only tricky part. I use these big binder clips or bulldog clips, and I clip the pin, and then I hang it up upside down above. I have a shelf above my work table. So that's the only tricky part is you need somewhere to hang the pins upside down. You, you could use a coat hanger with clips and hooks on it or clothes pins or look around your studio, around your house and see what you have that you can hang them from because you have to hang them upside down. That's the only tricky part. And let's see, mushrooms, what are these? So you don't have to buy new beads. You could do... Um, old jewelry. Now I just got this rack the other day and this is included in the rack and I almost was going to just put these away and I thought, hmm, you know, wait a minute. So I'm going to take some, oops, wire cutters that are tangled in metallic thread. Yeah, let's, let's just cut it off. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this apart into a bowl because the beads are going to go everywhere. I missed one. Not only by being careful with my arm because I just had surgery not long ago, but I also had physical therapy this morning, so kind of is sore. Now, when I when I take the jewelry apart, I necklaces apart. I, you know, I'm always doing it for the beads to make bottle cap earrings or something like that. Occasionally, I'll remake them into a necklace, but it's never in the same design that it came out of. So. And I never reuse the clasps, so all this part's all trash. But now I have a nice bowl of interesting beads, right? So we're going to do the same thing with this blue one. Now this one has a clasp on it. I may actually save all or part of it. I wouldn't use it as a clasp. I might use it as a charm, but look at that. That's interesting. The other one was just a straight piece of metal. So my only advice I have for you when you do this is do it over a bowl. Yeah, I, I think in this case, is, or this is a rare exception when I'm going to save that because I think that might be an interesting charm. I don't normally do that. Usually I throw the old clasps away.
sometimes the old thread that the necklace is strung on gets tangled, so sometimes the beads get stuck. There you go. There we go. Yeah, I'm going to cut these long strings off, but this side is cute too. I, I That might make an interesting charm at some point. So let's cut the string off. There we go. I'll throw the string away. Okay. So now, I think for this one, let's see. So now start digging for beads. So one thing I do is I like to see, you know, arrange them on my pin and see what kind of arrangement I'm going to like. I have another little tray of beads I pulled out of um, my stash of jewelry making um, stuff. That's kind of cute. I like that. Okay. Maybe I don't like that metal bead though. It's still not quite right. I like that, but. Uh, yeah, I like that better. So then the only trick is to just keep gluing. The crystal, the glossy accents is going to dry clear. So no worries on that score. And then hang them upside down and let them dry. All right, I'm going to actually switch cameras so you can watch me this way. And I'll be back.
guys, although I have plenty more beads and stick pins, I have to stop making them because I don't have any more room to hang them. So they're all drying. So I am going to let them dry and then I will make some more stick pins and I'm going to put all my little beads away. Oh, maybe, I'll, maybe I'll do it this way. Let's see. Anyway, so I will uh, be back in the next video with my dry stick pins and I will show you the couple of ways that I display um, and or store the stick pins and or hat pins. I do have a couple, not too many, I think I have three or four hat pin, antique hat pins. Um, and they're on display in another room and I will show you how to make that display and also show you how to make like a little pin book and um, we'll take it from, sorry, we'll take it from there. In the meantime, get yourself some floral pins, get yourself some kind of glue, glossy accents or epoxy and maybe some old, old jewelry. Uh, look around in your bead stash, see what you have. Um, you probably already have the glue. You probably already have the beads. So all you really need are the stick pins and they're not expensive. Uh, like I said, go to the floral department of your local craft or hobby shop. They should at least have like a two inch pin. That would work. These are three inch pins. These are from Joann's and these are by Doris. Yes, they are both by Doris. So, um, that's the manufacturer. So I, I really like the three inch, nice long three inch pin. So anyway, but use what you like or what you can find. Um, don't go spend tons of money and we will be back in the next video and I'll see you later. Don't forget to go out today and do something nice for yourself. You deserve it. Bye.